Okay, so let's take a look at a problem, M9-2, in which we have to decide whether to capitalize or an expense an amount. Remember, to capitalize means to debit an asset account, to add to the cost of whatever asset it is. And to an expense an amount means to debit an expense account. Now let's review for a moment the difference between asset and expense. An asset is a future benefit. An expense is a used up or received benefit. And let's take one moment just to take a quick look at our notes on this again. We just learned that when you buy an asset, when you acquire a long-lived tangible asset, the cost principle applies. All reasonable and necessary costs to acquire and prepare that asset for use should be recorded as a cost of the asset. That's whether that the asset you're buying is a new asset or a used asset. If you buy a used piece of equipment or a used building, all costs necessary for renovation or repair or even demolition of the old item should be capitalized or debited to the cost of an asset. Now what if an a, cost, a cost is expended after the asset is in use? Well, whether you debit an asset account or an expense account depends on the type of cost. If it is an ordinary repair or maintenance that is routine upkeep to keep that asset in normal working condition, then you shouldn't expense it because it benefits just the current period, which is a definition of expense. For example, adding windshield washer to your vehicle, um, filling it with gas, those benefit the current period and will be used up within the current period, so they should be expensed. However, if they're infrequent large expenses that increase the asset's usefulness, then that cost is considered an extraordinary repair, replacement, or addition, and they are capitalized. They're considered capital expenditures, and you should debit the asset's account. Okay, so let's take a look at our decisions. American Golf Corporation operates golf courses throughout the country. For each of the following items, select whether the cost should be capitalized or expensed. For capitalized, we're going to use a C. That means debit the asset account or increase the cost of the asset. If it's an expense, we're going to use an E. That means debit an expense account because it benefits just the current period. So number one, purchased a golf course in Orange County, California. That would be capitalized because it's the acquisition cost. And when you buy an asset, you should debit the asset account. And number two, paid a landscaping company to clear 100 acres of land on which to build a new course. Remember, the rule is all reasonable and necessary costs to acquire and prepare an asset for use and clearing the land is part of preparing it for use, should be recorded as a cost of the asset. We should capitalize it or debit the asset account. Number three, paid a landscaping company to apply fertilizer to the fairways on its Coyote Hills golf course. The question is, since this is a cost after first use, is it an ordinary or extraordinary type expense? Well, will we have to do this again? Does it benefit just the current period? And the answer is yes, in which case we expense it. We debit an expense account because this is not an infrequent large expenditure. It maintains that lawn's normal use and so it would be considered an ordinary repair and maintenance item. Number four, hired a building maintenance company to build a 2,000 square foot addition. This is to be capitalized and added to the cost of the asset because it is improving its usefulness through enhanced capacity. So we debit the asset account or capitalize it. And number five, hired a building maintenance company to replace the locks on a clubhouse and equipment shed. Now normally this would be capitalized 
First of all, we're talking about a cost after the asset has been in use. And if that cost enhances um, the efficiency, capacity, or lifespan, then we would capitalize it. Well, locks last a long time, greater than a year. So normally it would be capitalized. But because this represents an item that is so minimal in value, we're going to expense it. Now we didn't talk about this before, but there are some assets that are so low in value it isn't worth keeping track of and splitting its cost over all the years that you own that asset. For example, I have a stapler in my office that I've had for the 17 years that I've worked at the college. It has a tangible substance. I use it daily in the production of my goods and services, so to speak delivering an education to students and it's been around for a very long time. Ideally it fits the definition of a long-lived tangible asset. However, the college doesn't want to depreciate individual staplers and spread them out over the life that we expect to use them. So most companies have a threshold. Under that threshold they expense assets even though they qualify as long-lived tangible assets and over that threshold they will capitalize them. A stapler or in this case locks would f would come under that threshold. They're so low in value it isn't worth spreading their cost over the useful life of that asset. So we'll expense them. So this is an exception to the cost rule. The last item deals with goodwill. Paid an advertising company to create a pan to plan to build goodwill. Well, advertising costs for the most part are expensed if they benefit the current period. And this is in keeping with that. Goodwill encompasses a lot of good stuff like a favorable location, an established customer base, a great reputation and successful business operations. Although many companies have probably built up their own goodwill, Generally accepted accounting principles does not allow it to be reported as an intangible asset on the balance sheet unless the company has been purchased from another company by another company. So in other words, goodwill is the purchase price that one company pays to buy another in excess of the net assets acquired. For accounting purposes, the excess of the purchase price of a business over the market value of the business's assets and liabilities. So if I have a pizza place and it's the market value of its assets are 750000 but someone is willing to pay a million dollars to me for my pizza place because I have a great location, um, a set customer base, a wonderful recipe, and they are willing to pay more for it than its market value. The difference, the $250,000, goes on the books of the buying company as goodwill. And so let's take a look at our next mini lecture, and that would be the second one, describing the various depreciation methods.